say it had been a difficult mission, we'd be putting it mildly. It was like trying to plug the hole in the Titanic with a Tic Tac. Eh, but we did it. Our mission was a success, even though by the time we finished, it'd taken a bigger toll than the Pennsylvania Turnpike. Actually, a better analogy would be the Ohio Turnpike, which is more expensive and therefore can face a greater level of stress. That is better. You're right. And what was our reward for a job well done? Were we hailed as heroes and anointed with precious spices and oils? No, there was no anointing. There was just Jack pushing us right into what we presume is our next assignment. Just once he could see what it's like out there. Instead of sitting behind his desk with his comfy chair and his ergonomic keyboard and his stained maple pencil cup. Oh, don't forget his nickel-plated Puerto Rican nose hair clippers. Not that he doesn't need those. <laughs> Okay, we probably heard enough of that private little conversation that you secretly recorded. Besides, it pretty much ends there anyway. Are you kidding? Sometimes the hairs get so long, I just want to say, Jack, come on, either clip them or braid them. Didn't you give him the nose hair clippers? It was a re gift. My uncle gave them to me for my dog, but he died of eczema. Your uncle? My dog. Ew. Follow me. Despite your frivolity at my expense, I'm in a very good mood today. After all, under my guidance, you did successfully thwart a bombing attempt and save scores of innocent lives. But we didn't catch the bomber and we didn't find the bomb, which leaves me as satisfied as a cannibal with a fruit smoothie. Oh, that's nice. Conceptual and humorous. I'm still partial to the alliteration in Titanic and Tic Tac. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, that was better. better. What? You never played most colorful metaphor on a long bus ride? Getting back to conversations worthy of our short time here on Earth. You deactivated the bomb by shutting down the computer system that controlled the bomb. In my book, that's a success. And if the bomber tries to get his computer system back online, I programmed it to send a message to my PDA. And now, nondescript building in a beautiful setting on the outside is a spa. A spa? Tell me we're not posing as masseuses. Yeah, it's another trio of flesh-eating sex pots rubbing down well-oiled suspects until they talk. All the while wearing revealing outfits that show as much skin as possible when we beat up the bad guys. Hell spa, rub downs, fights in revealing outfits. Uh -uh. Just some notes I'm keeping. I thought Monday I might pitch what we're doing as an idea for a TV show. Hmm. Three female ex-cons working for a clandestine government organization seeking to rid the world of evildoers. It's certainly fresh. Well, that was my thinking. Network? I prefer syndication. You're not distracted by all the amenities. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah you don't want that. True. Anywho, this is not a mission. It's a vacation. And the only thing I expect you to do here is de-stress. De-stress? De-stress to your heart's delight. Our government spends its tax dollars on many projects of which the public is unaware, and for good reason. It's none of their business. This is a private spa where federal law enforcement employees can come and unwind. The Shangri-La. And the best part, everyone at Shangri-La is an employee of the government, which means it's a completely safe environment. For once in your hectic lives, you can bask in the knowledge that here, all the pressures you normally face from your jobs can be left behind. There are three career criminals with one shot at freedom. Now they're working for the feds who put them away. These are the women of She Spies. Bad girls gone good. Rejuvenate and rebalance limp earlobes with a hot paraffin anti-bloat lobe lube. Uh -huh. 
Hydro Calf Therapy Bubble Jet stimulates tired calves into a stampede of lower leg bliss. Oh. Henry's special piles of smoked beef with thick cut bacon on grilled Texas toast. <laughs> if this sounds like a good lunch, you're dying a slow and miserable death. Rebuild your body's crumbling temple with the help of master dietitian Deepak Schoenstein. Uh, I'll just, you know, wander. Frosted cornflakes. I'm sorry? Your breakfast this morning. Sucrose oozes from your pores and your body reeks from the fetid stink of processed grains. I'm gonna guess you don't write ad copy. I am Deepak Schoenstein. I hope you are here for dietary therapy. I'm Dee Dee and I am. Well, I mean, it's not that my diet is that bad. I eat lots of brown rice. Poison. And yogurt. Poison. And fresh fruit and leafy vegetables. Fresh poison and leafy poison. Sometimes I, I do cheat and I'm a cheeseburger. Couldn't hurt. Kading. Humor is an essential ingredient in any healthy diet. So anyway, I guess what I really want is to cleanse myself of impurities. Right now my body is a precision instrument. But I want it to be, you know, precisioner. Hmm. Dee Dee. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you that diet is the end-all and be-all, but it can solve every problem known to man. Please, place your instrument there. Now, in order to properly analyze your body, we must first analyze your mind. Please, tell me what's been happening in the days leading to your arrival. It's confidential. I'm not used to talking openly about what I do. But it's therapy, right? And Jack said we're all family here. Whatever leaves you properly centered. Well, I was on a mission to deactivate a bomb that was moving through a populated area. Galamis root. Continue. I linked to the bomber's computer and installed a lockout code. We didn't know who the bomber was. He was controlling everything by remote. Clear aspect broth. Continue. We locked out the computer that controlled the bomb and saved a lot of lives, but we never caught the bomber. Powdered legume. I'm devising a diet that speaks to your mood. Is there a password to the lockout code? Well, yes, but it's a secret. Of course. Given your reluctance to walk hand in hand down the path of dietary enlightenment, Perhaps we should start at our beginner's level. It comes with this fun bib. Oh, oh my God. I'm so sorry. Oh. I am so sorry. Oh, oh my God. You know, I thought for sure the brochure said full contact relaxation. <laughs> oh. oh, I just hope you're not in my kickbox your way to serenity class. Oh, here, come on, let me help you. Oh. Here we go, oh. right over here. Oh, I, I really am sorry. I must have been in my own little world back there. Population shame. Oh, well, uh, I'm glad I could pass through. Arthur Nagin, CIA. Oh, don't worry. 20 years on the job and I still have a tough time unwinding. Mm. Many a telephone solicitor has felt the sting of my pent-up wrath. Mm, you can get yelling at though, huh? Nah, I just track him down and pistol whip him. Agency says I'm overzealous. Ha! Like we all haven't mercilessly beaten the occasional irritating salesman. So, coming off a tough one, huh? Yeah, yeah, we stopped a bomber using his lockout code on the computer. Didn't catch the bomber, though. Password that only you know? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> hey, I'm Margot. I'll be grinding your pistons. I'm your masseuse. 
Right, right. I'm uh, Cassie or Masusi. <laughs> hmm. Let's see. You got a nice chassis, Cassie. Classic lines, a couple of dings on the back bumper, but I bet she hums on a full tank. Fingers crossed she doesn't backfire. <laughs> I was pursuing a car analogy. Well, you might have guessed I was a mechanic before I came here. One body shop to the next, if you know what I mean. Kinda took the massage thing right off, though. My mother was a nudist. She'd be buck naked at all hours. Never bothered me a bit, but my brother, still in therapy. Okay. <clears throat> oh, I got some shoulder issues. Relax. Hey, if my father would have relaxed every now and again, maybe he wouldn't have put that gun in his mouth. Your father committed suicide? No, no, just put a gun in his mouth. Ah, he was going for a world record with a Winchester rifle. All I could manage was a Colt 45. I tell you, that man had cheeks like a hefty bag. Oh, well, that can come in handy. <laughs> oh, tension in the trapezius. Last case hang up on your U joint. You could say that. You want to talk about it? I'd rather just, uh, you know, park it in the garage, give you the keys, and uh, read a magazine while you do the tune up. You're the doctor, doctor, but how is it that I have a problem just because I want my team to perform at the highest possible level? Now, I've made charts and graphs scoring set performances from field combat, the stealth techniques, to the proper placement of the rear pieces as a half inch inside the canal. And I, I think we can push these 97.5s and 98s across the board. I'm beginning to understand why your team may be overstressed. Why do you feel the girls need help? <laughs> well, they complain to me all the time. About what? Oh, being overworked, underappreciated, overtired, underused. They'll thwart an arms dealer on Monday, stop a hitman on Tuesday. On Wednesday, they want to sleep in. But I tell them, when evil sleeps in, so can you. Which is a great argument on my part, because evil is pretty much an early riser. So maybe you're upset because they don't take the job seriously enough. Exactly! I mean, yes. That would seem to be the case on any number of occasions, many of which are, in fact, so vivid I can almost see them in front of me. Fonzie, thought you just hate getting hustled at pool. I don't think so, sweetheart. take the skin conditions. So all I get are the ones with the communicable diseases? So there's a surfer bar about a half a mile up the road? Lead the way. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to ramble. Maybe they act that way because you push them too hard. <laughs> too hard? Try not hard enough. I let more things slide than a trombone player at a water park. <laughs> That's a game, most colorful metaphor. I, I was just... The point is they have to take it seriously. They can't succeed if they don't take it seriously. That's why I brought them here, to rest and regroup. So you see, I'm not the one who needs the therapy and the rest, okay? It's them. And they need it in the peace and tranquility of a facility that is completely danger-free.
wondering if one of my problems with the girls might be that I don't project enough. I wonder if my voice falls in one of those frequency ranges that's hard to hear. Ah. 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 I mean, sometimes I feel like I can't even hold a person's attention for more than five minutes. <laughs> Dr. Whelan? Dr. Whelan? I'm back. Now, we were talking about the reasons for your, shall we say, authoritative approach to your team? Yes, we were. You see, Doctor, I'm like the driver of the coach. My long coat, top hat, crisp white gloves, and most importantly, the whip. The girls are the horses. I'm sure they'll be interested in hearing that. <laughs> hearing that? But what about Dr. Patient Confidentiality? Don't you do that anymore? No, we don't do lobotomies either. We're very progressive. Uh, I see. Well, then, to clarify, I'm just the lowly coach driver, and the girls are the big, beautiful, majestic horses. Stallions, really. Lipizzaner, stallions. Only, you know, girl stallions. Uh, sleek, beautiful, extremely well-trained stallions. And it's only because of them that the coach moves at all. Okay. Look, I, I just try to guide them. That's all. Their job is very dangerous. I remember there was this one time. How we doing there, Deeds? Arms of the Wasu. I love it when she talks technical. Disabled. We're good. Let's do it. that happens. I found the bomb. Let's grab it and get out of here. Unless lifting it up activates the timer. Red and green wires. You know, that's so cliche. Which one should I pull? The red. The green. The red. The green. Die hard with a vengeance was the red. Blown away was the green. Executive decision was the red. Lethal weapon three was the green. Guys, this isn't a movie. You're right. If it was, we'd have bigger sets. Pull the green one, Dee Dee. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pull the red one, Cassie. Shane, don't pull the green one. Which one should I pull? The red. The green. The red. The green. The red. The green. I know I'm long-winded, but you see what I mean? It is scary out there. No, I, I have to demand excellence so they can protect themselves, so they don't get hurt, or worse, because 
If anything ever happened to those girls, anything, I don't know what I... I don't know what I'd do. Slivered skin tone. Oh, gee, you didn't have to go to all that trouble. I could have used imitation toe. It's no trouble. I buy generic. <coughs> Delicious. Within moments, you will start to feel the energy drain out of you, to be replaced with a sluggishness as your body begins to cry out for the compounds it requires to sustain life. Well, I wouldn't look forward to that. Now, where is that bottle I left here? Um, I spilled it. That was a very expensive distillate of consecrated nightingale excrement. Holy sh... I'll be right back. Excuse me, miss? Yeah? I need you to... The PDA? How to get in there? Oh no. Oh no. Shane, bad news. Oh, you're telling me. There's only one bathroom on the entire ground floor and it's unisex. The bomber made an attempt to get his computer system back online. Oh, we already knew he tried that. That's villain 101. But look how strong the signal is. I think the computer's right here at the spa. We're the only ones who have the password, right? That's why it didn't work. But if the bomber's here, he's gonna try and get it out of us. I've got some pretty curious CIA guy asking me questions. The diet guy's a little nosy, too. So let's just keep our eyes open, and we should warn Cassie and Jack wherever they are. Here I am, firing on all cylinders again. I'm feeling better, thank you. Well, this is a bunch of at-home techniques for you to use on your neck. I'll just put them in your bag. Anywhere's fine. Oh, no, Biggie. I used to go through glove compartments at the garage, too. It's like anyone's gonna miss a few quarters. These are herb-soaked linens. They ought to put you in a very relaxed state. New Mexico would be nice. You know, it's a state, it's kind of relaxed. <laughs> well, a few minutes in these and you won't be worrying about states or computers or anything else. Why would I be worried about computers? Oh, you see? It's working already. I'm beginning to understand, Jack. If your team doesn't perform to the best of their abilities, you're afraid they'll either meet some horrible fate or be taken away from you. Yes. And that scares you. Of course it scares me. Couldn't stand it if the girls weren't there. Can't be abandoned again. Again? I said, of course it scares me. No, 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 no. I, again, you said again. Again? I said again? I, I don't remember saying it the first time. No, you only said it once, but you definitely said it. Again. How could I have said something once and have said it again? No, 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 the word again. I'm saying that you said the word again. And I'm saying I don't remember saying it the first time. <laughs> Jeez. Like, can we just please steer this session back on track? Now, the girls have come close to losing their lives dozens of times. In fact, just a few weeks ago during sweeps, Things I'd rather be doing than dying. Uh, Playing miniature golf. Wallpapering the guest bathroom. Watching the second season of The Bachelor. Nah. Rather be dying. Oh. You know, I always wondered when this finally happened, how I'd react, you know, how I'd handle it. Me too. Would I handle it with dignity 
Except as a part of life I can't change. of death and all. Exactly. I mean, fortunately, they were able to survive, but what about the next time? And the time after that? They have to stay sharp. Jack, when were you abandoned before? I don't think I was. Think harder. A devastating deprivation. One so painful that the thought of having to endure it again is enough to make you push your spies beyond their physical limits to keep anything from happening to them. Something traumatic. Something horrifying. Something so terrible. You never wanted to talk about it before. Wiggles. You never retrieved what you spilled. The who now? Oh, yeah. The spill. Can I expense account it? Because you know other people's money is a really good way out of stuff. Somebody has been cheating on her diet. Your skin color tells me you very recently drank a glass of water, chewed a breath mint, and licked the back of an envelope. I spit the mint out after I swished. If you can't stick to the advanced course, Dee Dee, maybe we've already lost the battle for your soul. It's only a matter of time now before you'll be saying, yes, I want fries with that. Okay, I admit it. I'm weak. In the last three hours, I've thought about nothing but complex carbohydrates. I'd kill for some empty calories. Do you hear me? I'd kill. I'd kill. I'd kill. There. It's a start. Margo? Cassie, uh, yeah, you're awake. And you're holding my underwear. I, I was just gonna use it in a pagan moon magic bra ceremony. No, 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 it was all out when I got here. I was just putting it back. Right. Get me out of this thing, Margo, unwrap me. No. No, I will not unwrap you, you're being rude. I never liked rude. Rude is why I left the garage. So how about this? How about you just burn up a little gas trying to get out of park, huh? How about you just spin your wheels, see how that feels. Margo, you've gone too far. <laughs> Get it, like too far away? Hey, come back and we can make more jokes like that. Come back, Margo. Hey, how about this? How about five straight minutes of car references? Wouldn't that be great? Margo? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just checking your size. You know, Christmas is right around the corner. Oh, gee. And I didn't get you anything. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yes, I did. All oh, that Tai Chi and you pull a gun? Gun doesn't have arthritic knees. I think you're afraid. Is that supposed to make me put down the gun and fight fair? Actually, it was. What am I going to do now? What am I gonna do now? Oh. Ah! Ah! Oh. Oh. oh! Nice kicks. My hamstrings would have given out. <laughs> well, you know, you do have some strengths that I don't have. Oh, 
for instance, we've had two training sessions so far, and both times I forgot my training mat. Speaking of which... Oh. Tell me about Wiggles, Jack. Wiggles was a worm I had when I was six. He was my first pet, first living thing entrusted to my care. My first friend. The two of you were close? Inseparable. I remember I wrote a poem for Wiggles that kind of encapsulated the relationship. Wiggles, Wiggles, in the dirt. Wiggles, Wiggles, don't get hurt. Wiggles, 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 Wiggles. Wiggles, Wiggles, the worm. <laughs> he enriched my soil and my life. That's deeply disturbing. Hmm? Tell me about him. <clears throat> One day, my father took me fishing, and I was so excited. I wanted to help, so Dad gave me something soft and mushy, and by the time I'd punctured it under the hook... You realized? <sighs> Wiggles was gone. I caught a tasty Chinook salmon that day, though. Called him Thrashy. So your attachment to Wiggles was very strong? <laughs> yes. And his departure created a void, a <clears throat> loss that you took very hard. I was devastated. <sighs> but that's not all. I, I lost every pet I ever had. Squinty, my half-blind gerbil, snapped his neck on his little wheel. Larry, Moe, and Curly, my mice, were eaten by Shep, my cat, who in turn got his tail caught in the garbage disposal and never recovered. I lost two more dogs, a parakeet, and a gila monster named Bill as well. In fact, my childhood is strewn with the furry and or slime-covered bodies of dead friends. And then many years later, you recruit a team of women. Who I push very hard because I want them to be so absolutely perfect that nothing can ever happen to them. Nothing could ever take them away. Is it possible? Could it be that my problems with the girls aren't about them, they're about me? When I yell at them, am I simply reacting to my own subconscious fears of abandonment? Am I forever doomed to play out the drama that is my loss of wiggles? And most important, will I still be charged for this session even though I came to all these answers on my own? Yes, 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 no. And oh, yes. <laughs> Are you okay? It'd be better if I was out of this thing. Oh. Next time, can we do that the non-slapsticky way? Oh my god. What? You read Jackie Collins? Oh yeah, we have a double agent on our hands. I'm not surprised. Margot's been acting very suspicious. Margot? Who's Margot? I'm talking about Arthur. Arthur? Who's Arthur? The double agent. I thought Margot was the double agent. Who's Margot? The double agent. No, Arthur's the double Who's agent. Who's Arthur? The double agent. How can Arthur and Margot both be the double agents? They can't. They'd be quadruple agents. And how many double agents can you have before everybody's a double agent? Nobody's just an agent agent anymore. Six. Really? I didn't know that. I'm pretty sure it's in the handbook. Anyway, Arthur's a CIA guy who pulled a gun out on me. Dee Dee's PDA is saying someone's here who's trying to reactivate the bomb, and some guru's got her on a diet that's making her weaker by the minute. So I've been wrapping towels this whole time, and we're already headed towards the conclusion? Don't worry. I'm sure there's at least one plot twist left. for the bomber's computer. This is the double agent's office. 
Only half correct. Only half correct as in you are the double agent, but this isn't your office? Or only half correct as in this is your office, but you're not the double agent? Only half correct as in I am not just the double agent. I am also the bomber. It's true. It was I who gripped this city in a clutch of fear designed to make this government rue the day they ever crossed me. And I blame my diet. Your diet? You know, 10 years of this stuff makes you feel? Your himbi bark, evening thistle, bladder rack. None of these things are regulated by the FDA. We don't have any idea what they do. But I tell you what they do to me. They make me want to blow things up. There should be a warning label for that. It's also because I wanted to extort $10 million from them. But this diet thing does have me out of sorts. You're a sick mm. man. Actually, you're a sick man. Except for the man part. You feel weak because I poisoned you. You what? That's what's sapping your strength. A slow-acting poison and all those things I fed you. Thank goodness. I'm being poisoned. I thought I didn't feel well because I was failing at the diet. I was so disappointed in myself, but I'm not weak-willed. I'm poisoned. Well, that was silly. Yes, it was. Ah, this is the antidote. Also generic. But you can't have it unless you give me the password to unlock the bomb's computer system. I don't think so. The last time we saw that bomb in our tracking system, it was moving through a heavily populated part of the city. I can promise you that is no longer the case. Because it's right outside on the shuttle bus. Isn't that priceless? It was always on the shuttle bus. That's why I kept moving. It was riding all the way here with us. <laughs> now I'm really not giving you the password. Fine. Then I'm really not giving you the antidote. Never mind. I'll find it myself. Though doing it will be an irritant. Much like the fat enzyme is an irritant to the lining of the colon wall. Am I the fat enzyme or the colon wall? Boy, talk about your unpleasant either ors. Accessing your check-in information. Send me straight to government files. Interesting, interesting. Or no. Aha! We're armed again. Give me one reason I should believe an evil herbalist. The password was your brother's name. 85% of all passwords are a piece of personal information, 14% are obscene expletives, and strangely, 1% are the word smelt. The bomb is activated. One move and the whole building goes up. Hi, everyone. This is Deepak, the double agent. I thought, I thought you, you were the, the double, double agent. agent. You thought, you thought I, I was the double, double agent? agent? You were the one who pulled the gun on me. Yeah, well, you were going through my bag. <laughs> Isn't that embarrassing? <laughs> what an amusing misunderstanding. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. What I think we'll do now is tie you all up on the bus and put you back in a heavily populated area. Well, looks like we'll have to rely on somebody showing up out of the blue at the exact time we need him. Like at the apartment complex. Of course it wasn't over. He went and found those ninjas to help him fight. But it all happened because somebody showed up out of the blue at the exact time we needed him. 
Why are you telling this overlong and ridiculous story now? Because somebody just showed up out of the blue at the exact time we need him. Issues or not, nobody hurts my girls. That's true, I was a bit instrumental in bringing about the villain's demise. Not, by the way, the first time I've helped these agents extricate themselves from a jam. I remember the time... Okay, uh, the traps react to electronics. I was just reading about this in the agent manual. Shane, isn't there something... electromagnetic pulses that can disable circuitry or...? Directed energy. Concentrated bursts of microwaves that can knock out the booby traps. We can't even move. Concentrated bursts of microwaves. Jack, you saved us. <laughs> and of course, there was a time. Jack, uh -huh. it's okay, okay? We know how valuable you are and how you feel about us. And Jack, we're not going anywhere. So the antidote worked on Dee Dee. You're all safe and sound. And I think we've all had about as much vacation as we can stand. What do you say we go home? Oh, good idea. Oh, not a good time. Oh, yes. How about on something that doesn't have a bomb on it? Good idea. A clip of our warm and funny conversation on the taxi ride home will be seen in a future episode of She Spies.